All right, guys, we're here in Key West. Jack to be down here. We're heading to Shots and Giggles, one of the best bars in Key West. We're right across from Sloppy Joe's. We're on the corner of Duval and Green Street. I'm with my wife, Cindy, my trusty sidekick for 10 plus years of this bar hop, <laughs> island hopping lifestyle. What do you love about Key West, sweetie? What oh, I love? 10 years, it's seen every single, you know, version of my young adult self <laughs> from college romping around the streets here till my bachelorette with all my best friends to now bringing the pup and yep. being pregnant and not being able to drink. So it has a little <laughs> bit of something for everyone. That's right. Cindy and I are expecting in July. We're super excited as Millie's going to chase a rooster here. It's her new favorite hobby, in KW. <laughs> but the coolest part about Shots and Giggles is a bar we're checking out today. It's literally right off the ball. We're walking up to it now. I love it because of the location, the bartenders, the people, the locals, huge football fans in there, NFC East bar. Hani is a Washington Commanders fan. Kimmy is an Eagles fan. Sid, what are some of your favorite parts of Shots and Giggles? It just feels like home. It's like a home bar. You meet so many great people there from year to year. They keep coming back and you keep seeing the same great faces and it's just a lovely place. Yes, it is. Yes, Very it fun. Is. And I'd be remiss too, as we're about to go in and meet with Steve and Hanya, who are just true legends and have great local experience. They've been coming down here for decades. They live down here. They're locals, philanthropic people. Their whole bar is tattoos and scars and their team over there with Casey is so cool too. So listen, corner Ann and Green, Sid and I have even considered naming our daughter Ann because, or at least <laughs> I've considered naming our daughter Ann because we love this street so much. It's in the running. It's in the it's running. It's in the running. It's in the running? All right, that's good. <laughs> All right, what do we say we go check it out? All right, let's go. All right, we're hanging out on Shots and Giggles. Steve and Hanya. Hello. 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 <laughs> away from, yeah, home away from home for me. Uh, but I want to start off right away with you guys, Hanya. The typical question, how did you find Key West? How did Key West find you? Let's see, 25 years ago, I came down with my boyfriend. Um, I fell in love with Key West. I found a niche here, he didn't. He left three months later and I never saw him again. Um, I ran away from uh, San Francisco earthquakes and uh, 89 was the last one I could take. So by 91, I was, in, uh, I was in the Keys and the Caribbean, back and forth in the Keys and Caribbean, and uh, I found a home here. So, you know, bunked with some more bartenders in Key West too. Uh, got me jobs and that's the whole thing. You have to know someone down here if you want a job. And then your journey, like two shots for you, like, because I know you've bounced around and you've been- Well, I went to Pennsylvania here. for a while and met this crazy family called the Thompsons and um, uh, spent some time in Pennsylvania and the winters were brutal. So that was enough. I had to get back down here and they helped me get my feet back down here. And then I um, uh, got into bar business for a good 10 years, got out of bartending started selling liquor for a large company down here in Key West. And after 10 years of that, Hanya decided, and I decided, you know what, we should do something of our own. And we had a customer, a really good friend, Cowboy Bill, who passed away, uh, but he built this bar for us. He took this empty house. And he said, you guys need a, a good local bar. And we disagreed. And boy, was he right. Because it's 12 years later. I had a name for the bar. It was in Finnegan's one day, 25 years ago and we were fooling around with a napkin and a pen, and the question came up, what would you name your bar if you were gonna have it? And I wrote down, if it's not taken, Shots and Giggles is gonna be the name of my bar. And it came to fruition years later. Wow. Because of Cowboy Bill, if it wasn't for him, he could have picked somebody else or a million people that he wanted on this property, and he picked us. Everybody finds this place, place word of mouth. We don't advertise. We finally got something in lights down the street because I've always wanted shots and giggles and lights, but it was just word of mouth. We honestly didn't think it would work the first year. That's why we didn't quit our day jobs. So we couldn't open this bar for the first year till we got out of work, which was around six o'clock at night. And we were the only staff for the first year. We actually had customers that came in last, last week and said, I remember just the two of you were bartending because you didn't have a staff. We're like, oh my God, that was a long time ago. And then finally we're like, wow, this is actually gonna get busy. And it was only beer and wine back then. Yeah, I remember This that. room was a liquor room, remember that? And you could come in and buy a bottle, take it out. And uh, it just 
it just evolved. People just, we, we listened to what people wanted. We put the bottles behind the bar. I mean, we didn't start with a full bar. And um, we kind of let the, the customers dictate how this bar would be perceived as, and it was a local bar. Is that how football food started showing up? Like, hey, I want to come watch the games at your bar. And you're a huge Washington Commanders fan, so you're a huge Eagles fan. Yeah, well, it, it, yeah, we came down NFC East, and but we couldn't just limit it to that. We had two TVs, and of course that grew. But it just came, you know, we should put some food out so people can stay longer and not get so hammered. And and put and let's make it spicy. I used to make chili every weekend, or ribs, and make the sauces spicy. So they drink more beer. And then someone said, you know what, I can bring some food. And next thing we knew, this table every Sunday is amazing. It's like Thanksgiving dinner. And it's just, you know, I start with one dish and it just fills up. You guys do holidays too here, right? Oh, we do. And we feed people for holidays. Yeah. I mean, full on turkeys, hams. People come in, they bring, you know, all their dishes. So it's become a spot for people if they don't have a place to go for Christmas, Thanksgiving, stuff like that. Well, I'm going to go watch the game over at Shots. And one bartender. One, one manager. One like bartender. They run the whole like show. Yep. It's so cool. Yep. Yeah, uh, you're, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I you know I came from like a corporate situation from Half Shell where we had a team of people for every little job. And um, sometimes you made a lot of money, sometimes you didn't. I worked back here for a year and I know the potential that it had. And that's why we, the girls here, they make tons of money, but they take care of this bar. Yeah, it's a great bar, great people, great locals. My favorite part of Shots and Giggles is the people. The ownership, the friendliness, a lot of the locals come here. It's just a great pub, awesome pub. Straight up, right to the point. It's the people, it's the community, it's the culture, it's the atmosphere, it's the vibe that Steve and Hanya and their first class staff have created for locals and for tourists. When you're a tourist that comes in there, you feel like a local, right? They invite you in. Well, everybody takes a turn making a dish. It's all done by all the locals. So it's all the pressure's not on Stevie to bring all the food. And, you know, we don't have a, a kitchen here. So everybody brings their food, their dishes, whatever they make really well. And, and it works out well. You're a part of the potluck food for football. You got your football jersey on in there, right? Like. Everyone's a local when you stop in Shots and Giggles, and that's the vibe you want when you go on vacation, or at least me, because I like to be a local everywhere I go. Jameson on tap, talk about that. Jameson on tap, well, because we we drink a lot of Jameson here, um, and I asked about I asked one of the reps, and I said, I need to put this better than bottles on tap, and I'm like, you can't do that. So I went to the local beer brewing guys, and they gave me the they gave me the uh, slim keg, and the, you just refill it and put a little carbonation in it, put it on the tap. We have nine. Uh, handcrafted draft beers and one tap for Jameson. So it's it's cold, so you don't have to chill it. Um, there's no, it's the same as a bottle. Is it the only keg of Jameson in the country? It's only one in the state of Florida that's on tap that we know of. People come from England, they're like, oh yeah, we put that in, I know, upside down on a poor spouse, so you have to keep doing it. No, you just hit the tap and it comes out cold. And they're like, you gotta be kidding me. So when we go through a lot of Jameson, by, per bar stool, which legally we have six bar stools at the bar, um, and we're the largest selling Jameson account in the state of Florida. Oh, there you go. Talk about mermaid. Uh, Your water. I came up with a mermaid water um, maybe eight years ago, and it just took off. Can I have a mermaid water, please? You can't beat the refreshing mermaid water at Shots and Giggles. It's the cucumber vodka. It's the piled high cup of ice. It's that watermelon sensation, that flavor, to go up to the window in Key West, to grab their mermaid water, to get that first sip on a hot day, you can't beat it. Check out the freshest, freshest drink on the island. That's the mermaid water at Shots and Giggles Key West. Because of the name, because of the combination, I just, I nailed it. <laughs> it's delicious. If you like watermelon, yeah, I nailed it's not it, too but... sweet, and it's, it'll give you a good little buzz, and um, it, it's it. It's the, it's easy for the bartenders, and it's a shot or a cocktail. And we do Mermaid Fest every year, so it kind of ties into it. Well, 
FudgeKitchen.com, shipping fudge and sweet treats across the country. Send your friends, your family, and your friends down in Key West a delicious taste of that Jersey Shore handcrafted fudge and saltwater taffy, along with their sweet treats at FudgeKitchen.com. Now back to Key West. Honey, talk about the onesie pub crawl. Casey and Ashton, who's from Baltimore, came up with this pub crawl to benefit um, not a particular charity, but for the bars. Because uh, each each uh, drink that goes over the bar, Casey, the owner of next door, gives you money for it. So he did it for the bars and, and the bar owners and the, and the bartenders. It's the ninth year and people from all over the world are coming in here with their onesies. They plan their vacation around it. Um, it's, it's a blast. I mean, this past uh, Sunday was 500 people. Wow. At least 400 came in here because that's how many tickets we got in return. Back, yeah. So imagine this poor little house, this poor little termite written house. <laughs> 400 people in it. 400, well, all day long, you know. It, Everyone has a different plan. I've been doing it. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Six years in a row. Six years, yeah. Gotta be, I what think. What are you, 25? Uh, no. All right, Hanya, ghost story time. The ones that stand out at sea, when we were putting the place together, we were painting, putting the bar together, I was taking care of my tenant's dog because he was always fishing and this beautiful husky would not walk in the bar with me. And she was always so friendly and I could take her anywhere. When Steve was here, the police horses wouldn't come past this bar. Frank Fontes, Tennessee Williams gardener, died here, murdered. murdered. No, they never found his killers. Um, they went to trial, but nobody was ever convicted. We w physically witnessed things happen when we had a full bar and the whole bar would just stop and watch a bottle fly off the wall. Or a martini glass just come off the shelf for no reason. And then go, wow, scream Frank. Go back to go back to drinking and playing the music, so. So we had the ghost tour was, we were part of the scene. They were in the back, um, a, a group of them. A couple hours later, I'm like, God, what happened to the, the tour? And I'm like, what's happening? You guys have been back here for hours. And the ghost tour guide was like, I, these guys are talking to Frank. I'm like, oh, come on. They're like, yeah, do you have a question for Frank? I'm like, of course I do. Who killed you? <laughs> and they were like, the guys that went to trial, that's who took my life. And then they said, they want to thank you for opening up the bar. If you're missing any rum, he's been drinking it at night. And thank you for playing Dancing Queen, which was the only disco song on my playlist on my phone at the time. He's like, that song was made for me. That's what kind of freaked me out. Kibby, explain where we are, because I think, you know, Key West is kind of like Stork Seaport, and then it's like Duval Street. But you're a block off Duval, you're right between them, it's like perfect location, but explain to the like, outside world, like, where are we in Key West, and like, how does it work in the ecosystem of bars and restaurants in town? So you have Duval Street, which is a main strip, like any, any party town that's going on. Um, there's over 300 liquor licenses in town. Um, that goes with hotels and restaurants and bars. Um, we are half a block off of the main drag, right behind Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's is an iconic bar, great place to go eat and drink, see great live music. Um, across the street is, um, was a fire station. And um, back in uh, the 60s, they built it from wood to brick because it burned down, which then became City Hall. So we're, we can hear all the music, we can see the action on the Wall Street, but we're quiet and hidden a half a block away. So if you don't know where you're going, you're probably going to miss us, which has kind of been like the mystique about the bar, where if people find us, we're like, how did you find us? They're like, uh, we were just walking in and we saw the sign, or some bartender down the road said, you got to go over there. Now, it came to be like, usually like in October, the Fantasy Fest, which is our big Mardi Gras. People that knew about the place, they would use us as a hub. Like, they'd start their night here in groups, they come in, they get a drink, get ready, they go out. Meeting point later when they got separated, Let's get off the beaten path. We're only half a block away. Let's go to Shots and Gales. And then, you know, certain times it gets really busy. It, you know, it's set up, it is a house. Um, every room was a bedroom. Um, you know, the back you know, the back room where we lick room was a kitchen. All the, all the pipes are still there. So it's being converted, the doorways have been opened up. Um, it, it's got a feeling. It's like kind of like um, you come in, you know, your buddy's house and you go down in the basement. It's yeah. like a basement bar. 
with the sofas in the back room, I mean, literally people go in there like, they think they're in their, their, my living room. Has anybody ever taken a nap back there or a this siesta? This guy named Colin Thompson. Never. Oh. I slept, I've never taken a nap. On the love seat. Did I? <laughs> yes. That was years ago. Steve and I love how um, uh, celebrities make it in here. I have a great picture of Steve and the um, ex-speaker of the house, John Boehner. You got a good story with him. So he, he's here fishing, but um, Earnhardt Jr. is at the bar and he's getting told how to drive from one of our customers. And, and uh, he gets up and he says, you need to turn around and come outside. I want to introduce you to someone. So he takes me out there and, and it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, Speaker of the House John Boehner, who had just retired because, well, our story is, he, he spoke to the Pope, the Pope went to the White House and spoke to everybody in there. And I guess he confessed to the Pope and after that he cried and then retired. So he was on the front porch and he was as red as his glass of wine. And I said, what are you doing these days? He's playing golf and drinking and fishing. I get up in the morning, I have a bottle of wine. I'm like, that's awesome. I'm like, and you don't have no detail? No. He's like, I got detail. And you looked around and you saw all these guys with shiny shoes, Bermuda shorts on, and flowered shirts and a little piece in her ear all over out front of the property. I'm like, wow. Yeah, Venus Williams came in. She was so cute. And tall. And tall. <laughs> and didn't really know how to drink. So she was she was asking us what's good. So she had everything. <laughs> and along with her boyfriend who was gorgeous. Um, I hope they're still together. She probably had a world record hangover the next day. So she's really like, all this sugar. All this sugar. Yeah, yeah. And then Earnhardt, of course, he's been a staple in here for a while. Yeah, he was, yeah, him and his beautiful wife, Amy, and, and then they had kids and they, they did the family thing. Louis, Louis, Louis Jean, number 33 from the Eagles back in the day when he had leather helmets. The last question I want to ask, I think this is a important one. In your eyes, how has Key West changed since you got here to now? There's more restaurants, there's more businesses. Um, there are, there is less affordable housing for um, the hospitality industry, which is a shame, but I think that covers the whole country also. So we just got to find a way for people to, you know, live down here, have a good living down here. And um, Key West is a beautiful place. You could be sitting next to a millionaire, billionaire, somebody that washes dishes, it, everyone gets along. It's a special place though. I mean, They've been part-time, quote-unquote, locals forever. It's my 30, yeah. I've been coming 30 years. This is back in the day when I when I bartended at the Half Shell Raw Bar. So this is 10, 12, oh, this is a long time ago. And this kid used to come in and we let him shuck some oysters. Uh, oh my God, this is Colin at Half Colin. Shell. How and, old are you? Wow. Five. That is so We put up cute. a stool on the other side of the shucking station and he was allowed to have one oyster and one <laughs> clam. Well, so he would be... Poopy diaper. Poopy diaper. <laughs> but that's, that, that's memories that I have of this town of my my family coming down here and and and, and they're still coming here. So it, it means a lot. And the fact that you know I I left once and I had to get my I had to get back here. And and in doing so, it's been a couple of business later. And um, you know, like one thing that she said, you know, the, the the cost of living here, everybody says it's incredibly expensive. You know, when I grew up in San Francisco, it's worse there. Way, uh, way worse. And the People come down here and it's, it seems to be like every 10, 12 years, there's, it's a hot spot. And they come down and they spend stupid money on property. And it just jacks up for everybody else. It may, as long as they put money into the property. But it's still, it's paradise. I mean, the weather is awesome. Well, I love you guys. Thanks, Thanks so, so much for doing that. Thank you so yeah. much. I think my favorite part about Shots and Eagles, honestly, people say it's a good time, it's the good people, it's all these different things, food, football. But, you know, when you bring your buddies down from Carolina Panthers, and they say, hey man, you going on vacation to Key West? It's like, no, I'm going home. And that's shots and giggles to not just people from far, but also near. You heard testimonials from people here locally talking about how special this place is. It's different. It's Sunday. It's a living room in there right now, atmosphere. And there's absolutely nothing like it. Like literally the pop bar, the shepherd's pie competition, the friends, the family, we were in here today at 9.30 in the morning for the games going on in London. So, food, drinks, football, it's the best place, and it's been home to me for decade plus. Congrats to Stephen Hadi and all their success here. That does it for another episode of Food, Drinks, Football.